Right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adi, and today we have the first of many North American International Championship team reports. And first off, I am joined by Sadat Singhal, or Inc. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, Adi. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, and, you know, I just got back from the North American Championships yesterday, and I am super excited. That was such a great tournament. There were so many great matches played, uh, including some by you. Yeah, and I guess for those who don't know you, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so uh, hi everyone, I'm Siddharth. I started playing VGC in September of 2020 during the pandemic, and NAIC was my third official event. I've been relatively active playing online tours and in the community, I guess, but didn't really have much experience in terms of in-person events. I was at Indianapolis and New Jersey regionals with a similar version of the team, but I think it only really got to the point um, where it was like very refined by NAIC. Yeah, well, I mean, you did really, really well at Indianapolis. You went 7-2 and bubbled there. You did really well at New Jersey. You went 6-2 and you bubbled there as well. Uh, and so it's really great to see you get this this really great finish, even though you were just one game short of uh, top cutting North American Internet. Uh, top 16 is a really, really huge accomplishment. Uh, and it's been great to watch you improve and watch you improve your team over the course of the metagame. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about the team. So you used a, uh, a Zashin Kyogre team. Uh, how, why did you choose to build around these restrictions? Um, so for me, I didn't think that it was a good idea to use Pokemon I wasn't very familiar with. And I've been using Zashin and Kyogre since pretty much day one of the format because Zashin and Kyogre it just came out from the beginning as the most overwhelmingly powerful duo. Yeah, it had a very simple strategy to execute, which is just that both restricted deal a lot of damage. And supporting them in ways that enable to do this consistently and end games as soon as possible seemed like a very simple and effective way to build a team that could win me games. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then how did you uh, put the Pokemon around Kyogre and Zacian? Why did you choose these Pokemon? So... Tornadus kind of comes out as a front runner when I wanted to find ways to end games much more quickly because Tailwind enables Kyogre and Zacian to move before my opponents. So instead of playing a long, more bulky game, like players that are opting to put Grimmsnarl on their team, having Tornadus to just provide quick, proactive pressure lets me play games where I don't necessarily have the room to make as many mistakes or to get my let my opponents get back into the game. And Tornado seemed stronger than Whimsicott because Whimsicott doesn't really have that much offensive pressure, whereas Tornado pressures Pokemon that Kyogre might not want to deal with, like Rillaboom, for example. After that, I kind of... I started out the format using a variation of Torn Ogre that was uh, popularized by Mike D'Angelo with Incineroar and Zapdos over the Kartana and Landorus. But as the format progressed and Rinya Sun became more popular, it was kind of evident I couldn't get away with using that team anymore because it just had a really difficult matchup to navigate. So I transitioned towards this variation that had a Landorus and Kartana because Landorus and Kyogre tend to give Rainya Sun a generally difficult time playing their game when Landorus is able to pressure strong damage neutrally and super effectively into basically all of their Pokemon. And it enables Kyogre to not take that much damage from Zacian and Groudon. And I can basically deal with the Gastrodon by just attacking it a lot. Right. That was something that we saw with uh, with Oe's team at the European Championships. Um, were, were you inspired by that team at all? Uh, not really, because Oe had a lot of pieces that enabled him to just play the game uh, kind of fundamentally differently from how I wanted to use this team. With like a lot of his game plans were kind of centered around using the balance core of Incineroar and Rillaboom to enable his Life Orb Kyogre to win games. This was more focused on utilizing Tornadus to just 
get myself to have my restricteds do a good amount of damage in the game and just utilize my Dynamax with my non-restricted Pokemon in most cases to kind of clear out paths and punch holes for my restricteds to win my game. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, and then uh, when did Kartana uh, join the team and when did Amoongus join the team? So Kartana was the fifth Pokemon it put on this team because like it... Uh, Tornadus, Kyogre, Zacian, Landorus does not, like, kind of evidently have a very good matchup into other rain teams. And if, like, I'm not, if I don't have a good matchup into Kyogre, that just seems like a very big issue with the team. And I knew that I wanted some kind of offensive grass type that could Dynamax, which left me two big options, Kartana and Venusaur. And I wasn't very feeling particularly keen on having a Venusaur on this kind of rain team because it just didn't seem like it particularly fit with the kinds of game plans I wanted to play. I had tested out Torfeev's like Venusaur, Torkoal, Tornogre team at one point, but I just couldn't really get the hang of it. So I figured I'd go with Kartana and see how it went. And finally, Amoongus was the last Pokemon I had on this team. And it was originally an Incineroar like uh, Gabriel Agati had on his team, but I found like I never actually wanted to bring the Incineroar into matchups that it should have been good in. And Amoongus threatened matchups that were giving me trouble, like Lunadon and Calyrex Palkia, much more effectively than Incineroar ever really did. Yeah. Uh, I definitely buy that as a Calyrex, Pal Calyrex Ice Palkia player. Amoongus is potentially more problematic for me on this sort of team than Incineroar ever could be. Uh, and... Yeah, it seems like you had a really good idea of what all the Pokemon are doing on the team and what matchups they are brought to. Do you want to talk me through the Pokemon themselves and uh, why you trained them the way they did? Yeah, so uh, first, the Zacian spread aimed to maximize the amount of damage and speed I'm getting out of it while still retaining like enough bulk to not die to any kind of hit. So the Zacian is EV'd to um, 15 out of 16 times it's going to take... Um, most Groudon's Precipice Blades. It's going to take um, generally weaker Groudon's Max Quake after Landorus intimidates it. And uh, usually it's going to be hit with a three hit KO from Sash Calyrex's Astral Barrage. So those are all defensive benchmarks that came up relatively often. And the speed is enough to outspeed uh, other Zacian by one point that are going to outrun opposing Venusaur in the sun at plus one speed, or if those Venusaur are at minus one, which tended to come up a lot when I was testing this on ladder and the attack was kind of just dumped so that it would do a lot of damage. Um, yeah, so Kyogre was kind of similar and I wanted to just maximize the amount of speed and damage I'm getting out of it. I felt like Timid Kyogre, while useful, didn't really do enough damage, so I wanted to be modest. And the bulk is just there to live a play rough every single time from Zacian that are trained with a similar amount of attack as my Zacian. Um, mm -hmm. Tornadus is pretty straightforward. Uh, going back to the Kyogre, you mentioned that you didn't want to build the Life Orb variant that was really focused on Dynamaxing the Kyogre. Uh, what are your thoughts on um, something like a self Vest, or were you always committed to running Mystic Water? I think I was always committed to running Mystic Water on this team, mostly just because I think that Mystic Water brings out the best of both from uh, Salt Vest and Life Orb Kyogre because um, a Salt Vest Kyogre has the option like Mystic Water to not Dynamax, but Often it is much too weak, and I'm not getting the damage rolls that Mystic Water with this much investment and a modest nature is actually going to get me. Like, I Oko a lot of Zacians, which Assault Vest will never do with just Water Spout. And Life Orb felt a lot harder and less effective to play outside of Dynamax because often your only water move is Water Spout, and you're like chipping yourself as well as just generally taking damage across the course of the game. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other thing about Kyogre is it often has to choose between uh, Ice Beam and Thunder. 
did you ever consider running Thunder on the Pokemon? Uh, yeah, for sure. I think Thunder is a really useful move in the mirror, but what I found is that between Kartana and Zacian, I can generally hit the Kyogre for, like, opposing Kyogre for a good amount of damage without clicking Thunder, and often if they're not Assault Fest, like, Water Spout and Hurricane is going to put out respectable chip to the point that Zacian and Kartana are anyway going to do enough damage, so I thought having Ice Beam to, to be able to damage something like a Gastrodon was more effective in this case. Sure. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, and then I guess moving on to the Tornadus, you mentioned that it is pretty standard, um, but I guess the it, it does have a lot of different support moves that it can flex uh, into, such as Taunt, uh, I guess is the most notable one. Um, did you ever consider running... Uh, any other moves on this or were these four moves kind of locked in i think i was always kind of just locked into running these four moves because um hurricane is obviously just there to provide tornadus with damage tailwind is kind of mandatory i thought that there were a lot of positions where i wanted to have the additional speed control to just click icy wind under tailwind with tornadus and it came up in basically every game i brought tornadus so there's, I didn't really feel like I would want to drop it. I definitely considered dropping Protect because there were a lot of times I wanted something else like Rain Dance or, as you mentioned, Taunt to prevent opponents from being tricky under the sun or setting up certain uh, things like Trick Room or just damage that could be annoying. But I found that without Protect, Tornadus was really easy to just double up into in the early game if they let something like a Rillaboom. And that kind of just derailed all of my game plans from the beginning. Uh, and yeah, and we saw that in uh, the grand finals of NAIC where Agati was using Protect on his Tornadus uh, in the first turn of every single game, just to avoid getting doubled into with uh, the fake out in an Astral Barrage. So uh, definitely really important, I feel like, on a Focus Ash Tornadus to keep that Focus Ash intact uh, on turn one where people are going to try to stop you from getting your speed control up. Yeah. Yeah, and so I guess talk me through uh, the rest of the Pokemon. Yeah, so with Landorus, it's also a pretty straightforward EV spread. I just wanted to optimize it for Life Orb Recoil and split the defenses. I think the only thing that's really noteworthy is running Sword Stance instead of Protect. And um, so when I was testing this team with Mike D'Angelo um, for New Jersey and Indianapolis, I had run Protect on the Landorus, but... I found that that was a slot move slot. Like we never, neither of us really ended up clicking much, and there were a lot of boards where Landris could be intimidate cycled because of not being like a white herb variant. So like slowly, they can kind of just play defensively and reduce the amount of damage Landris can do, especially if they play passively into it with something like Incineroar and Gastrodon. But given that I have an Amoongus, it lets me take advantage of these kind of kinds of like super passive turns where they're just switching around to click sword stance and then all of a sudden i have like a plus one or a plus two life orb landorus that just knocks out every single pokemon on their team in a single hit and i thought that was incredibly useful in a lot of situations mm -hmm. uh yeah Makes so sense. moving on to kartana um so i think the white herb is pretty notable here Obviously, instead of the Assault Fest, which I also ran at Indianapolis and um, New Jersey. the So um, I, I had uh, Assault Fest until basically two weeks before NAIC when the Japan Nats winner had that white herb carton on his team. And uh, Mike also pointed this one out to me. He's like, um, the most of the time assault vest isn't actually going to help that much because the attacks that it's reducing damage from are hitting are like going to be two hit ko's either way it's just sometimes they're going to do like 55 percent, other times they're doing 80 percent. but largely uh if you're white herb it gives you better margins into certain matchups like the Kyogre mirror when they're when they have like an Incineroar that can just weaken your Kratana so that you're ultimately not doing that much to their Kyogre. All of a sudden your Kratana is unintimidated when they swap in the Incineroar turn one and then you do 70 or 80% to their Dynamax Kyogre. Um 
the bulk EVs on this are pretty notable because when I was testing much more attack and less bulk investment, I found that I was just dying to random attacks from Kyogre. And having this much investment seems like a lot. Um, it's specifically enough to live a max special attack, modest life orb, Kyogre, max geyser in the rain. Um, I found that like making sure that I could always live that attack gave me a pretty big advantage into the mirror where they can't just get like a single turn right and oops my cartana's dead i lose the game and that came up a lot in a few of my games especially in day two yeah um we start to see more cartanas move away from assault best which is kind of strange given that you are running four attacks it's not like you have protect or, or max guard as an option um and so the normal assault best set that we've seen all the way going back to Gen Seven, uh, we saw uh, is kind of declining in popularity. Gotti was running Life Orb on a very similar set. I think it's the exact same uh, four moves. And so, yeah, I think this is really cool. I don't think you really need the max card. It sounds like, uh, and all the form of these moves are so important. And the White Herb too. I noticed that we're running Ice Rider. Uh, you usually, if you if you're playing well, if you're positioning well, they only get to intimidate you once. It's really hard for them to intimidate you twice. And so. Um, you only need that one one time, uh, and so definitely seems like a, a very cool set, and that EV spread makes a lot of sense in that matchup. Yeah, for sure. It it's, it seems super relevant in pretty much every kind of matchup I imagined it being relevant in, so I'm really happy that Mike convinced me to make the switch from Assault Fest to White Herb. I wasn't very sold on it at first, but all my testing definitely won me over, and... Um, Mm -hmm. The last thing I guess we have is the Amoongus, and it's a pretty standard set. It's um, the same. The EVs are literally from that um, event in 2020. I don't actually know uh, what good Amoongus spreads are, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to run this spread because Amoongus kind of just lived everything I needed it to live anyway. And mm -hmm. the, I guess the couple of notable things here are the item is the Koba Berry, which we found came up relatively often uh, against teams like Thunderous, uh, Thunderous Kyogre Sashian, when we wanted to bring Amoongus to kind of threaten their Grim Snarl mode. And it allowed us to win positions where they could just click like Max Airstream and they don't get to remove our Amoongus with a single attack. Um, we were considering items like Bright Powder and Quick Claw to maximize random win cons because, like, Koba Berry doesn't necessarily activate that much in other matchups that we bring Amoongus, such as Calyrex Palkia or Lunadon, where in a lot of cases they just straight up don't have a flying type attack. But Bright Powder was super unreliable, especially like in positions where we want to let Amoongus die. If we dodge a move there, that could be really catastrophic and annoying for us. And I kind of wasn't super sold on Quick Claw just because I wasn't sure that it would come up more times than Koba Berry in like the specific positions we needed Koba Berry. Whereas like Quick Claw could be useful in positions that we didn't really need it to be, but we would lose the games that Koba Berry was winning us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and I guess, did you ever consider um, a different attack and move on Amoongus, something like Pollen Puff or Foul Play, or um, maybe even like Sludge Bomb or Seed Bomb? I think that um, Foul Play was probably the only other option I was really considering because it would be very cool to threaten Calyrex Ice, especially after it gets an attack boost or two under Trick Room. But um, in the Rinya Sun matchup, a lot of the times I some, like actually brought the Amoongus and I thought that having a grass move to threaten the Gastrodon was really important in end games where I like couldn't maintain Zacian plus Landorus or Zacian and Kyogre to kind of just double up into it consistently and break it down. Amoongus gave me a way to just do big damage to it without like playing super carefully with uh, and preserving two Pokemon to beat Gastrodon in an endgame. Yeah. Uh, all these sets make um, a lot of sense. They are, I guess a lot of them are pretty standard, but these EV spreads seem really refined for exactly what the role that your Pokemon are have in um, different matchups. And so I guess the next question is, uh, how do you approach some of the common matchups that you expected to see in this metagame? 
Right. So I guess the first matchup I thought about with this team was the Rinia Sun matchup. And uh, usually I have two game plans going into that. The first one is if, um, in game one, I typically expect them to not bring the Charizard because a lot of the times they're really wary of me just utilizing like Tornogre to break the Zard early. So I can get away with leading Landorus and Amoongus with um, Zashid and Kyogre or Tornadus and Kyogre in the back. And Amoongus is really punishing to when they're doing the game plans with Incineroar, Zashi, and Gastrodon and Groudon in some order because they almost always have to double up into the Amoongus slot to actually remove it. And if they don't, I can click Spore. And Sleep is really influential in this kind of metagame where... Uh, like, you know, one free turn for me to set up or click Water Spout or something can just potentially end the game on the spot. And I think that it, while it was a bit less consistent into Charizard, uh, I could probably bail myself out of some of the more hard positions if I got a prediction or two correct, which is, like, pretty good margins to have into that kind of matchup. And the other game plan I had was what we saw Agati use versus Chongshun, which is where he just went with his Tornadus and tried to put damage out in the early game and just win the end game with powerful Pokemon in the back, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and did, how did you face a bunch of Rinya Sun in the tournament? How was that? How I did, did not play? actually play a single one at NAIC or New Jersey, and I'm pretty sure I didn't play any at Indianapolis either, so I guess all of the prep for that matchup was kind of wasted, but I'm still very happy I did prepare the matchup as much as I did because it was like kind of the team to beat going into New Jersey and Indianapolis, and by NAIC, it was like, I could probably get away with disrespecting it, but I had a feeling someone or a group of people would try to make Rinya have a comeback. And I guess I wasn't entirely wrong, given Chongshun's own run. Yep, definitely. Uh, and then the other big team, the, the team to beat, I think, is uh, Kyogre Zashin, of course. There are... Yeah. A bunch of different variants of Kyogre Zashin, but how did you normally approach those matchups? Yeah, so usually if they have Tailwind, I want to lead Tornadus and Zashian with Kyogre and Kartana in the back. And speed control is kind of vital to this matchup, so um, the the two variants, I guess, are Tornogre and Whimsogre. Um, if it's Tornogre, you kind of just really want to find these positions where you can uh get like a single speed boost that makes you faster than all of their pokemon so like either you dynamax your cortana or sometimes you dynamax your tornadus if you're feeling kind of bold and if you're able to find those positions with like, next to your kyogre or your zashian and like click max airstream you can really swing the game effectively in your favor and that's Kind of similarly true with Whimsicott Kyogre, except it's a lot easier in that kind of matchup, which is, I guess, what you could see if you looked at my stream game against Colin, where um, it was heavily reliant on me finding that uh, that ability to get my Kartana in when he didn't have a Max Airstream Pokemon, and just starts using Max Airstream to have a much more like dominant form of speed control in the matchup. Um, mm -hmm. If they're a Grimmsnarl variant, the matchup can be a lot more tricky at Team Preview, especially if I don't know if they're using Life Orb or Assault Vest Kyogre, because my game plans are generally kind of similar, but they can get a bit dicey, especially if they're Life Orb. Uh, I usually bring one of Tornadus and Amoongus with Sashi and Kyogre and Kartana, and I just try to aim to waste their Dynamax turns as effectively as possible because a lot of their damage in that game kind of just comes from Dynamaxing their Kyogre early on to just take KOs. And if you can deny them that, then you're in a really good spot to use your Kartana to Dynamax with this one of Zashian and Kyogre alongside it and just run through their team in the middle or end of the game. Mm hmm Yeah. Uh, and I can't imagine you didn't face any Kyogre Zashin in this tournament. So uh, yeah. how did that matchup feel over the course of your run? 
Yeah, so in day one, my two losses were to Zashi and Kyogre teams, but I also did beat a lot of them too, so I felt pretty positive about the matchup given that it was it definitely wasn't a team issue that lost me those games, it was just playing poorly, but when I got to day two, I beat every Zashi and Kyogre I played, and my two losses were to uh, other matchups, so like... I, I overall I felt pretty good about my swordfish. Uh, sorry, no, I didn't beat every swordfish I played. I lost to Agadi for my win. I I forgot about that, but yeah. Um, I felt like the matchup was either even or in my favor in most cases. Uh, and it was really just down to the individual player I was against and their familiarity with the intricacies of the matchup, more than anything. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I guess, uh, like, the one other team I kind of prepped a lot for going into this event was Calyrex Ice and Valkia, which is what you and some of your friends were kind of having a lot of success at regionals in the last few weeks with leading up to NAIC. I was definitely uh, super scared of that team going in, so, like... Um, a lot of my lines involved doing something similar to what Agati did in his top four against Justin Burns, which was leading Sashin and Kyogre with Kurtana and in my case, Amungus, not in center or in the back, and um, essentially threatening your uh, at least one Pokemon, uh, one of Palkia and Incineroar at the lead with a lot of damage or a KO, and then Amungus usually pressures the opponent to bring Tapu Fini, because otherwise they're going to get put to sleep unless they're like Lum Calyrex or Goggles Palkia. And their their alternative is to trade spores with me, but that can get pretty risky when my Zashian and Kyogre threaten so much damage that and they have to have like Trick Room, but then my Amoongus is wasting their Trick Room turns and they kind of just have to get lucky with sleep turns. Uh, like at that point, almost all of my opponents would be bringing uh, the Tapu Fini, and the issue with Tapu Fini in the matchup is that in most cases it's kind of just a dead slot, like, it gets up Misty terrain and it doesn't really do much more for the rest of the game, so I found that I was able to outlast their Trick Room by switching around smartly and utilizing Protect, and then just Dynamaxing Kyogre or Cortana and winning the game. Mm -hmm. And, uh, speaking from the opposite side, uh, yeah, definitely having the Amoongus makes the matchup so much more tricky because we can't do uh, exactly what we want to do, which is, again, what Justin kind of showed against Agati does force us to bring Tapu Fini, uh, and that doesn't let us, like, kind of power through this team nearly as effectively because it is a lot slower Pokemon. So um, that was definitely something we saw with, uh, with Izzy and her team at Vancouver Originals, which, of course, uh, Sohaib also got top 16 with at this tournament. Um, and that, and that really disrupted our game plans. Although, I guess Agati did show that you can still win even without it. Um, yeah, Among Us is such, a, such an important match game. Among Us is such an important Pokemon in that matchup. Yeah, for sure. Among Us really felt like it carried my matchup into any team that had Trick Room, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. And I didn't actually play any Calyrex Ice Palkia at NAIC either, but I played a couple of Lunadon, and Among Us was really good against Lunadon too, so I'm pretty happy I had Amoongus on the team. Mm -hmm. uh, were there any mat other matchups that you were either really worried about or that you had uh, prepared a lot for? Uh, yeah, so I guess just the uh, Calyrex Shadow Zacian team that Emilio won New Jersey with, I wasn't sure that too many people would bring it, but I knew it was an important matchup to have prepared. And generally what I saw myself doing was leading Tornadus and Zacian in pretty much every case and bringing Landorus and one of my remaining Pokemon in the back. Well, not Amoongus, because Amoongus is kind of useless in the matchup when they have um, substitute Zacian. It doesn't really threaten to do much, but either Kartana or Kyogre is generally pretty good. Um, sometimes you can lead Tornogre, but it's only if you're really like predicting that they're going to bring the Incineroar to the matchup, that Kyogre is better than Kartana. Sure. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and then, and of course, that team has a Gastrodon. Um, and I believe that uh, James Evans' team was also very similar, uh, except that it was uh, Calyrex Groudon, 
right? Instead of, ca but it also had the gastrodon. I know, I think it played quite similarly uh, from what I saw. Um, but I guess, did you have an idea of how you're going to face the, uh, the Calyrex primal teams that were running around either James's team that, of course, he got top eight in Milwaukee with before winning or uh, Nate's team that got second place in Milwaukee? Yeah, so against Nate's team, I actually brought the exact same four Mons. I would do Tornadus, Sashian with Landorus and Cartana in the back because Kyogre doesn't really well in to nate's team if i expect him to bring the charizard kyogre can be useful but if they're going to go uh when's it called calyrex zashi and uh sorry not zashi and kyogre and regioleki i think that doing both landris and kartana is extremely useful because kartana enables me to have a strong dynamax option into the back of kyogre and regioleki and Lander Asterion lets me Dynamax pretty effectively into the back of Calyrex Shadow and Regieleki. And I thought that having both options was incredibly important in that matchup when I could lead Tornadus Sashian and have generally safe plays, uh, unless they like completely hard read me turn one into like both of their main leads, which tended to be like Whimsicott plus Restricted. And uh as for my matchup into James's team, I was I hadn't prepped it that much, but my general matchup into like Calyrex Groudon teams was that I was pretty sure they didn't have Trip Room. So I could just lead Tornadus Sashian with Landorus, and if they had a Gastrodon, I'd bring the Cortana, and if they didn't have a Gastrodon, I would bring Kyogre. And I would just try to play the game in a way where I could get Tailwind up and run through them with my Dynamax as effectively as possible which was which went through with varying successes as you could see with the Gaudi versus james and finals right uh and yeah i mean we saw that exact matchup pretty much uh, in finals and uh was seemed like a pretty volatile matchup of course uh perhaps the the light orb on landorus versus the winer on landorus might change some things but um yeah it's hard to say uh and i guess were there any other matchups that you wanted to talk about, or do you want to hop into the tournament run? No, I think we should just hop into the tournament run. That was pretty much every major matchup I thought a lot about before the tournament itself. Yeah, and then I'm sure that uh, it sounded like you faced a lot of very different teams over the course of the tournament run. So tell me about the tournament and uh, some of the more interesting matchups that you faced. Yeah, so my uh, I went X2 pretty early in the tournament. I lost my round five, and I was sitting at three and two. So I needed to win four sets to make day two. And at three and three for round seven, I found that I was playing against Alberto Lara, which was not necessarily a name you want to see at uh, when you have your... Sorry, uh, you know, at four and two, not three and three. Um, yeah, so that is not a name you really want to see when you have your tournament life on the line. And his team, when I loaded up into team preview, was very frightening. He had Eveltal, Groudon, Regieleki, Whimsicott, Regigigas, and Weezing. And that was, like, very... Uh, it seemed very powerful and just, like, a strong hyper-offense team, I guess. I hadn't ever thought about how I would play against Regigigas and Weezing, prior to NAIC, because I figured that my matchup was just win rounds one and two, and I probably wasn't going to play against it. I didn't win round two, so I guess that's why I ran into it then. And um, and for what it's worth, Alberto did start 0-2, oh so the game <laughs> really was win rounds one and two. <laughs> yeah, so um, conveniently enough for me, he didn't bring Regigigas or Weezing. He led Eveltal Regieleki with Whimsicott Groudon both games and that was kind of very nice for me because i knew how i wanted to play against teams that were going to do evelto regieleki stuff because i had a general idea of how that matchup was going to flow just based on playing evelto zashian teams before which also have the regieleki and yeah, I managed to win that set uh, in two pretty close games that just came down to getting a couple of correct calls in the last two turns. But it was definitely one of the more interesting sets I played in day one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and moving on to day two, uh, I think pretty much every one of my sets in day two was a highlight of my tournament. But I think one that like particularly stood out was my round 12 against James Beck. 
And um, he was using Calyrex, Shadow, Zacian, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Gastrodon, and Thunderous. So the Zacian Calyrex team that I had mentioned earlier, that I had definitely done some thinking about before NAIC. And both of us were 9-2 going into this round. So we needed two wins and one loss uh, to make top cut at NAIC, right? And James got those two wins and loss. Uh, and I lost two. So that was a bit unfortunate. But... Game one, I went in with Tornadus and Zashian and Landorus and Amoongus, and that's why I mentioned earlier Amoongus is really bad into this matchup. <laughs> because Among uh, I, I got like the early turns right, and I had Landorus and Amoongus out, but he had substitute on his Zashian, and Amoongus did absolutely nothing in that position against Zashian and Gastrodon, when my th thinking was, okay, cool, Amoongus should be able to put some pressure on the Gastrodon, right? But Amoongus was completely useless, and I lost the game. And then I brought Cortana instead of Amoongus in the game two, and it was really useful, and I managed to win that one just because of the pressure Cortana actually was able to put in terms of, like, damage onto his lander, uh, sorry, into his Zashi and into, and into his Gastrodon. And then in the game three, I think this was like probably the most frustrating and the worst game I played all weekend. It was like, I called him bringing the Incineroar as an adjustment. And I let Tornadus and Kyogre into Incineroar and Calyrex. And then turn one, I clicked Hurricane into the Incineroar as it swapped to Gastro. I got a critical hit and I confused it. And then the next turn, it hits itself in confusion. And then we play the game a bit more... Um, he clicks Ice Beam into my Kyogre, expecting the Landorus to switch in, and he catches the Zacian, but Ice Beam freezes the Zacian. And it just stays there frozen for two turns as he gets to click Behemoth Blade into it twice, and uh, there goes Zacian, and I was sitting at 9-3. and three. Yeah, uh, that's, that's really unfortunate. Um, but yeah, and then you did have, uh, you won the next round, and then you played a, a Gaudi, like you said, uh, in the winning in. Um, do you want to tell me about that set? Yeah, so against Agati, um, the Tornogre Mirror is probably, I think, one of the most vo like volatile matchups in the format because uh, Tornadus speed ties. Like, who, if you if you both go for Icy Wind on turn one, whoever wins the speed tie usually is going to win the game because most of the time we double into the other Tornadus with either like Icy Wind and Origin Pulse or Icy Wind and Behemoth Blade and that just completely decides the game turn one. So I knew going into my game against Agati because both of us had played on ladder like way too many times going into NAIC and we'd found out the morning of that, oh, that was your alt and that was my alt. And um, so we both had a pretty good understanding of each other's game plans at that point. So I let Tornadus Sashi in and he let Tornadus Kyogre. And um, on ladder, I usually click Tailwind and play off. So I'm like, okay, he's going to click Icy Wind and Protect because that wins the game turn one if I do that. So I protected both Pokemon and I got the turn right. And then the next turn, I clicked Tailwind and play off. But then, um, so he clicked Icy Wind and Origin Pulse and I got in my Cortana. And then I did the exact same thing I did on ladder, which is I doubled his Tornadus. Except he whiffed the Origin Pulse, he protected his Tornadus, and he clicked Origin Pulse. He whiffed the Origin Pulse into my Zacian, and then I kind of just should have won the game there. Uh, but I kind of, I think, in retrospect, threw the game a bit because I like only clicked Max Airstream with my Cartana afterwards. And if I click uh, Max Knuckle or Max Overgrowth in the Kyogre, I probably had the ability to just win the game with Cartana and Zacian. But I kind of caught up in the heat of the moment it was like okay no i need to click max airstream and get speed boosts because my tailwind is going to run out soon which definitely wasn't the play in retrospect mm -hmm. um and i lost game one and gabriel definitely played better in that game and game two he led uh, landorus and kyogre with incineroar and zashian in the back and i was completely confused because i had no idea why he had done it but uh he kind of just tried to intimidate Cycle my Zashian and prevent it from doing much, but I doubled into his Kyogre with Hurricane and Play Rough, and by turn two, his Kyogre was dead, and I had Tailwind up, right? But what ended up happening was that uh, towards the end of my Tailwind, he maxed his Landorus, 
and I whiffed an icy wind into it. Which, uh, since he had the white herb, like, it didn't matter in terms of the speed tiers, but um, if I didn't whiff that, um, my Cartana's Leaf Blade would have been able to pick up the Landorus, so that probably cost me the game, but I'm not particularly sure how it would have played out either way. So I don't think I necessarily lost on Missing Icy Wind, but I think, like, that kind of just showed me how if a single wrong turn or a single bit of bad luck as Gabriel had by missing the Origin Pulse or I had by missing the Icy Wind could definitely just completely swing the way the Tornogre Mirror is going to be played. Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, two very high-powered teams. that, uh, and, and like you said, a lot of speed ties just because you're running a lot of the same Pokemon. So I'm um, not surprised that it's a very volatile mirror. And uh, I mean, Agati is such a good player. There's no shame in listening to him. He did get second place in the tournament, and you basically played I mean, a five-mon mirror. Uh, so uh, top 16 was is a really, really impressive accomplishment, especially for your first year competing, your third event ever, um, you, you've just really been this beacon of consistency over the uh, the last few months, and it's been really, really impressive how well you've piloted this team. Um, so yeah, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Adi. means a lot. Um, but um, yeah. And yeah. So uh, I guess uh, I really recommend that you try this team out. If you are looking to try out Zashin Ogre, I think this is, um, I mean, again, this this and Agati's team, very similar teams, but probably the most consistent variant of uh, that core. If you want to try that out, the rental is on screen right now, and the paste is in the description down below. Um, but yeah, do you have any uh, final words or shout-outs that you wanted to give? Oh uh, yeah, so just one, thank you. Uh, first, thank you a lot for having me on the channel, Adi. And um, second, so shout-outs um, Mike D'Angelo and Aaron Trailer for helping me prepare for NAIC and basically all of my offense with Tornogre. It was really helpful, and uh, shout outs to the Blizzards Discord for being a super supportive group of friends and shout out to everyone else I met at NAIC that was just supportive of me and super nice to me during the entire tournament. Um, the best part of this community is just meeting people at in-person events and more than just the tournament result, the best part of NAIC was truly just the tournament experience and everyone there. Mm -hmm. I mean... As someone who scrubbed out, I would definitely agree with that. The best part of the tournament is just the entire atmosphere, meeting people, meeting so many people uh, that I hadn't met before. Uh, and yeah, and getting, in my case, getting to watch my friends do do really, really well in this tournament. Um, so yeah, thank you again for coming on the channel. Really appreciate it. I loved hearing your insights into this team. And congratulations again on the top 16 finish at the North American International Championships. And until next time, I will see you all later.